Hi, and welcome to another video on UiPath with me, Jeppe. In this one, we're taking a look at debugging and some of the tools that you can use in Studio to debug your applications. So let's get to it. So what is debugging exactly? Well, it's the process of finding and removing errors in the code of your automations. And when I say code, of course, I mean activities mostly when we're talking UiPath. So the way you do it is you slow down or pause the execution of your code and then execute one activity at a time while monitoring different elements. So let's try that. And before we start, let's just have a quick look at this automation that I've built. It's a very simple automation that reads an Excel workbook using the read range activity. It reads it into a data table called DT employees. Then it logs a message saying that now it's done loading the employees list. And then for each row in that data table that we got, it will simply log a message listing the first name and last name of the employee saying that we are done processing that employee. And then when that's done for all of the employees, we'll log a message saying that now we're done processing. So if I execute this, we can see in the output window that we get the log messages that we put into the code. It's done loading the employees. It's done processing each of the five employees and it's done processing altogether. So that went very quick and very smooth. But if we want to halt this process in the middle of it, what we can do is we can set a breakpoint. And a breakpoint is simply a point of execution where we want the execution to pause. So I can right click an activity and select toggle breakpoint and we get this little red dot signifying that this is where the execution will pause. So if I run it now, we can see that when we reach this activity, we get this blue border around it. And that means that now we're in a paused state. And now we can step through our activities one at a time using what are called the step actions. And the step actions you find up here, they're step into, step over and step out. And you can also use the F10, F11 and combine with the shift key. You can invoke all of these actions. So the step into activity is fairly simple. It simply executes, and I'll use the shortcut key now, it simply executes the next activity in line. So now we executed the log message activity. The next activity in line is the for each row activity. And that's an activity that will sort of change the scope of our execution. We'll move into a loop where things will happen repeatedly. And if we use the step into action here, we'll simply step into that loop and we will have to step through each of the data rows that are being processed. If we want to avoid that, we can use the step over activity up here. And you can also do that using the F10 key. And if we use that, we will step over the for each loop and down to the log message activity. Now, of course, there's the step out activity. What does that do? Well, let me just uh, let this run to the end and restart it. And if we now, uh, when we reach the for each loop, we use the step into activity. So we're actually, you know, stepping through each of the data rows down here. If I sort of get cold feet and say, okay, I don't want to loop through a, a thousand rows, I can use the step out activity to step out of that scope. And when I then use the step into activity now, we're done with all of the looping inside of the for each, and we step onwards to the log message activity. So those are the three step actions. And they're very simple, but they come in very handy when you're debugging. Now, before we move on, we'll just take a look at breakpoint settings. If you right click a breakpoint and edit breakpoint settings, you have the option of setting some conditions and other stuff on a breakpoint. A condition is basically an expression that if it evaluates to true, then the breakpoint will hit. So for example, if we say that the row first name must be equal to Joe, that means that only if that is true, will the breakpoint hit. We can also set a hit count. That's just a counter indicating that you only want the breakpoint to hit on its, let's say, fifth pass. So now the fifth time we find someone named Joe in the first name column, the breakpoint will hit. You can also set a message. For example, we found Joe. And that will just log to the execution log that we found Joe. We can also opt, if we have a log message here, to continue execution without actually breaking. This is a breakpoint that doesn't break, and that's also called a, a trace point. But that can be very useful. If you're good at setting these kinds of breakpoints, you get a lot of conditional log messages in your logs, and that can be really helpful when you're looking for mistakes in your code. So stepping through the code one step at a time is not going to solve any problems. You have to find your errors 
And uh, what you use to do that mainly is you monitor what goes on inside of your application. And over here on the left, I have three windows for doing exactly this kind of monitoring. We have a window called the locals window, one called the watch window, and one called the immediate window. The locals window is a predefined window where you cannot really control what is displayed. This displays all of the variables, objects, exceptions, and things like that that are currently in scope, meaning that are visible from wherever your point of execution is right now. It also displays the properties of the previous activity. So right now we are at the log message activity. It shows whatever properties are accessible from the for each activity that we just ran through. Also, it shows all of the properties of the current activity and things that are in scope in that. And it's a good mix of data types that we can see here. Some of them are simple data types like strings, but some of them are complex data types or objects of classes that have properties and things like that that we can explore. For example, we have our data table up here, the DT employees data table. That is in scope currently because it is defined in the scope of this sequence. If we go to the variables pane, we can see our data table here. So what we can do is we can expand this data table. And what we can do is we can explore it up here. For example, we can see that it has a property called rows. That is actually a data row collection, which again is a complex data type. And if we expand that, we can see that the rows property has a count property. And that's a simple data type. That's just an integer. And we can see that that has the value 5. So that means that just by exploring this window, we could drill down into our DT employees data table, and we could find out from the rows collection that there are five rows currently loaded. So that's really powerful stuff when you're exploring all of your data and finding out, okay, where is something going wrong with my automation? The watch window is slightly similar and very different from the locals window. In here, you can define what is it you want to watch. For example, if we just stay with the data table that we were looking at before, we can say that we want to look at or keep an eye on the DT employees rows count property. So now we're looking at the exact same property that we were looking at before, but we don't have to drill down in order to look at it. We can just type it in here, hit enter, and then we get the value here. If you have a complex automation, you could have a lot of stuff that you add to your watch window here, and it gives you a very easy overview of what you're keeping an eye on during debugging. Also note that when you're working in here, you do have autocomplete or intelligence. So it's very easy to sort of find the stuff that's available for you to look at. Also, in the locals window, if you find a property that you think, oh, this is something I really like, I want to keep an eye on this. For example, this display name property. We can just right click and add to watch. And when we then go to the watch window, we can see that it has been added over here. The immediate window. That's a slightly more geeky version of the watch and locals window. Because in here, you can simply write whatever expression you want to have evaluated. So, for example, again, if I want to write DT employees rows count, that just gives me in a command line format the value of that property. And that's also something that's quite valuable. Sometimes if you may be trying to concatenate a string or do some kind of calculation, you can really use the immediate window to your advantage. Also, what it can do that the watch window and the locals window cannot do is it can manipulate the data that you have at hand. So let me just stop the automation here and start it again. And then I'll just step into our data here. And now I know I have a, a data row in scope right now because we're inside for each loop that loops through these row items. So if I type in row first name to string, I get Joe. Well, I don't want him to be Joe anymore. I want him to be Jim. So I can just type in row first name equals Jim. And now Joe is Jim. And if we type in just the name of the data table and get the entire data table written out, we can see here in the data that the guy that was once Joe Brown is now Jim Brown. Of course, this is only temporary while we're executing this but it gives you an option to manipulate data for debugging purposes, and that's really, really powerful. So that's the locals, the watch, and the immediate windows. And there's a lot more to these windows than what I've just gone through. This was just an introduction, and if you liked it, hit the subscribe button and give me a like. It really makes a difference. And also, you can hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified when I put out more videos. So thank you for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.